You're listening to Why Are You on CGRU. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of the Office of the Provincial Advocate for Children and Youth. This is Walid Abdul Hamid, and you are listening to Why Are You on CJRU 1280 AM. Hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure meeting you. Glad to be here. I've been reading a little bit about you, and I read that you were traveling to different parts in around Africa and the Middle East um, performing, but then you um, started to perform in bigger festivals in Northern Europe, um, decided to perform in another part of the world. Oh, why did I decide? Actually, I get picked by a band, a very well-known band in Africa. I was glad, you know, with a young, young man, like a teenager. And um, uh, for sure, I cannot afford to travel to get a ticket on a stop, but I'm glad, you know, grateful to be a musician, an artist. And they picked me to play with them drums and a palimbo. Palimbo is the bigger instrument, like a, a xylophone, a marimba. Usually in the summer, like, they, they bring a lot of band from Africa to Europe, you know, just probably for the loving of the rhythm and the style of music. And Thank you. So I'm just wondering, who taught you how to play instruments and sing? As as an African young boy, you you get to show interest, like the elder. Like very much I learned from a lot of musicians, some of them professionals, some of them just a hobby, but they know how to play. Also, my mom, I, I born premature, mm. less than seven months, and she was sick. I was, you know, nursed by a lot of uh, different women around the neighborhood. And we we believe, like, in our tradition, like the premature child, you have to touch them and sing for them and and, 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 and be around them a lot. Mm-hmm. And I believe probably, you know, when I hear the story, probably I will take that as my first music lesson right. from those women. Like, I think the <clears throat> a lot of women around my neighborhood, they're responsible for a lot of my earlier childhood uh, knowledge, wow. especially when one's come to music as well. Well, it looks like they're very successful at uh, what they're they trying have, to do. You know, yeah. um, did your parents encourage you to pursue a career in music? My mom. My mom, yeah, for sure. Uh, she, you know, uh, my mom, she was a teacher. She was like one of the first teachers in my neighborhood. Mm. And uh, for her education is really big of a deal. She believed education. As, as, you know, as an African woman, she always, she want to see uh, you know, her daughters or sons like to be a doctor, but I'm the only guy. When I went to art, she didn't say anything. And I was like very, like in, in Africa, in Sudan in particular, mathematics is really big of a deal. Right. And Arabic. Right. Because we study Arabic in school, you right. know, that doesn't mean like that's our first language. It's like, you know, we, we have Nubian languages, the opera, you know, the native language is different, but you have to be really good on those two things, right. those two subjects. And I was really doing well in math. Right. And she wasn't bothered. I, I can't see, like, she understand, like, this guy is not into, like, being engineering or something, you know. she. I think she saw that in an early kind of, you know, in my life. How would you describe your style of playing or singing? Oh, uh, playing. It's really hard to describe the style of music. Sure. African music influenced, like, the rest of the world when it's come to music. Mm-hmm. Like, most of the rhythm come from Africa. You know, I see, like, I'm hearing... When you say funk, I have a different name, different name right. for that reason. When you say hip hop, I have a different name. When you say reggae, I have a different name. When you say calypso or macumbe or kombe or, or, or salsa, you know, I have a different name. Right. The, you see, like, then the whole, that rhythm, rhythm is like the foundation when it comes to music. Like, it's, you can sing with the drum, you can have, like, people can dance and sing, but, you know, you know, with the piano, maybe you'll have a hard time to find the rhythm. Sure. Even the, even the piano is a percussive instrument. Right. But uh, that shows, like, uh, you know, African musician, for them, like, to play a different style of music is not hard. They have this fascination of of looking and seeing different people around the world, and I love, you know, being surrounded by different people from different parts of the world as well. And I just sometimes I love the language. And I think, like, also Toronto have a lot of things to do with that as well. Coming here, I lived here since 1991, 92. It, it's extremely diverse. I'm very biased to this town when it, when it comes to people, right. not to the system, not to people sitting in the chambers in the city hall, but to the people, to the community. I, mean, I, I believe the community more than governing kind of style of 
an institution. No, I believe the community. And I think we really have a healthy community. Probably I'm one of those luckiest, like a musician being playing with Indian, with Chinese, with Tibetan, with uh, Middle Eastern, and beside, you know, my African thing. And also I, I produce as well. I produce a lot of R&B, hip hop, even I'm 48 year old, but they still produce hip hop. And I play with a lot of hip hop guys as well. This is Don't Shoot by Waleed, featuring Solar Sea and PHS Crew. In the past decade alone, January 24th, 2004, Timothy Stansberry, Brooklyn, New York, unarmed. November 25th, 2006, Sean Bell, Queens, New York, unarmed. January 1, 2009, Oscar Grant, Oakland, California, unarmed. January 29th, 2010, Aaron Campbell, Portland, Oregon, unarmed. July 18th, 2011, Alonzo Ashley, Denver, Colorado, unarmed. March 7th, 2012, Wendell Allen, New Orleans, Louisiana, unarmed. September 14th, 2013, Jonathan Farrell, Charlotte, North Carolina, unarmed. July 17th, 2014, Eric Garner, Staten Island, New York, unarmed. August 9th, 2014, Michael Brown, Ferguson, Missouri, unarmed. In the past decade alone, these men and hundreds of others have lost their lives to police. Local police report to the FBI, 2012, a white police officer killed a black person at least twice a week in this country. You are listening to Why Are You on CJRU. We have a choir called the City Choir. You know, I take the African or R&B music or even reggae music and make it and shape it to be a vocal, to be a choir, oh, well. you know, to make it a little choral kind of music. And I think African music plus uh, crossing Europe and also coming here because, I'm, you know, I lived here more than I lived in my own homeland. Right. I lived here for like 26 years. And also besides three years in Sweden, one year in New York, I left when I was 17 year old. And that shows you also, I have to give a credit. Like I, I do every place I picked some stuff, you know, you get influenced, you get inspired. Right. And as I said, I always love being with people in a coffee or whatever. I just love talking to people and inspire. And, and also I listen all the kind of music. Right. If you walk to my room, I don't understand language, but I, you know, music is music. Music right. is a language. It's a universal language. And, and also, I don't listen to mainstream, but I have, I still have CDs. You know, you walk to my room, I have like thousands of CDs, for music from all over the world. Right. Yeah. Well, I've read that you've composed and produced music for TV in several mainstream Hollywood movies. Um, can, like, what are a few that you... Um, have produced that. What the, few I'm proud of? Uh, I did. Uh, I did uh, a series called Whiskey Echo. It's about okay. true story. Doctor Zod Border. Okay. True story, but they make it as a drama. Right. But it's based on true story. It was on CBC, BBC, RCT, and Australia, and also they picked to be a Hollywood short movie. Mm -hmm. And I did actually compose the theme mm -hmm. uh, for that. Uh, you know. So what was it called again? Whiskey Echo. I, you know, I try to find it most of the time, I like to watch it and stuff. I can't find it. It's 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 a little, uh, it's like almost one of my biggest thing way back, like almost like 15, 17 years ago. Okay. Very successful one. And what also, what I did, I did, um, I did uh, Lumamba, Master Lumamba, his documentary I wrote the music for, for History yeah. Channel, um, Discovery Channel. What I, do, I did something called The Hair. You know about the style of hair from different parts of the world. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I wrote the music, um, just a little things here and there. Some stuff I'm not going to mention because I'm not very proud of. <laughs> 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 Sometimes, as a musician, as an artist, you do stuff like to pay the rent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh -huh. you know, so as as you just mentioned, you you mentioned some things that you may have done in your career that you're not uh, entirely proud of, and so something that I wanted to ask you is what you think the role 
of the artist is in society as we see it now, especially in sort of our current context where at times our profitability and to an extent our respectability can be valued more than our contributions? I, that's a great question. Actually, I do see the art, especially the music, it, they can play a big role to lead. To I, I see myself, sometimes I call myself like I am a reporter in a different mm-hmm in a different style of reporting instead of going to the incidents and, you know, with your camera or, or watching or, 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 or taking a, a picture of, of, you know, the place where there's a war or there's a, something happening. Sometimes, you know, you, you take that and you report it by making that incident to music and to the song mm-hmm. uh, that you make people aware and, and see. Mm-hmm. And especially now with the social mm-hmm. media before... Some people, like, I don't know if you remember, guys, like, I, I really am inspired by the 70s, you know, the, the hippie, the hippie, mm-hmm. you know, movement in the 70s when they refused, like, all the stuff about Vietnam and those, like, the artists play a big role. Mm-hmm. Um, Free the Pain, I play with Free the Pain, actually, more town mm-hmm. artists, wow. Drifter, uh, somebody like, uh, who was, like, Bob Dylan, mm-hmm. like, those guys play a big role to educate people. It's wrong to go to the other country mm-hmm. and invade and, and to educate also... Uh, the person who who doesn't, uh, you know, a lot of people, they think about America as the place mm-hmm. like everybody educated. No, there is a lot of places mm-hmm. like in America, people even didn't go to great one, mm-hmm. but they will listen to the radio when they hear Bob mm-hmm. Dylan say it's wrong to go to Vietnam mm-hmm. in a context like uh, as a song with a melody. Mm-hmm. I think they get aware, okay, this guy, you know, mm-hmm. he's my favorite, you know, he's my favorite mm-hmm. singer. He's saying that, but must be mm-hmm. wrong. And, and, mm-hmm. and that shows like, yes, art and music in general, can play a big role or bring in a lot of things, you know, can report a little things and make people aware of what's happening in different mm-hmm. parts of the world. And at the same time, also, you can make a love, peaceful song to mm-hmm. make somebody else feel good as well about mm-hmm. themselves, about, you know, whatever, their sexuality, their mm-hmm. identity, wherever they come from, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, what I think I hear you saying is that artists shift in and out of a lot of roles there leaders, they're reflectors, they reflect back society on itself, they uh, soothe people and they teach people. Are, are those some of the things that I'm hearing you saying? Like, Yeah, as, as, as I say, like, mm-hmm. you know, some, like, for me, like, I can compose a song and I reflect what's happening. I haven't been in Sudan, like, almost for 30 years, mm-hmm. but I can, from what I'm hearing, from what I see in the social media, I will compose a song to reflect what's happening there, mm-hmm. even I'm not even there physically, mm-hmm. but emotionally and, and consciously I am attached. Mm-hmm. I'm, I am attached to that place because what's happening there could be something wrong. Mm-hmm. And for people to see that, I think sometimes when, when, when you make uh, a melody or you make a song, it, it, it's a fast and good tools for people mm-hmm. to understand sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So you're also uh, you're also a teacher. Yes, right? I am. Um, so what do you feel is the most important thing that you impart in your students? Um, is there anything you attempt to give them that they might not receive from other teachers or their education as a whole? I okay, that's great. You know, coming going back again as an African, we all for me I believe the system of mentoring more than just you know I'm getting paid. Bah, bah, one hour, boom, mm-hmm. go, go. You know. mm-hmm. I, I'm like for me coming here. Sandy is a really great friend. I have a lot of respect and and we sh- we 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 share a lot of views in life. But mm-hmm. coming here to share a little bit of information, you know, with with the sincere kind of feeling to it. And I think the teacher coming from Africa, he's a mentor. He's mm-hmm. a mentor. Like like it's not only because you're getting paid or they cut the payment. Mm-hmm. I feel sometimes working in, in institution as Amber or mm-hmm. as you have taught also at Trier Sonia, I feel most of the time I feel like, oh man, this is I feel like corporate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's feel corporate more than supposed to be uh, uh, you know, the place of of learning should be like more ritual spirituality mm-hmm. around it. Regardless, mm-hmm. I'm not talking about, you know, religious right. in particular, I'm talking about People should be sincere to the student. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very stressful, and the whole tuition and the whole system of marketing. Mm-hmm. I don't really. Sometimes I don't approve of those, but but at the same time, the student also take advantage of that person inside that room mm-hmm. instead of texting. Or sometimes mm-hmm. I see like distraction, like there, you know, a lot in in, in, in the mm-hmm. classroom. I, I've been ten years at Hamburg. I seen that, like I seen 
a lot about that. But uh, but um, yeah, I, I I I do believe the system of mentoring more than teach a student kind of mm-hmm. you know label. Thank you. Um, you've mentioned that you've lived in Toronto since the, the early 90s, and um, in that time you've worked with quite a few artists and theatre companies like Cahoots or with Debbie Young. Um, can you give me a highlight of your work here in Toronto? Oh, and in Cahoot! Yeah. Cahoot in theatre. Yeah. You know, I want to just shout out for the theatre in, in, in Toronto. It's very mm-hmm. healthy, mm-hmm. but we need more diverse. Mm-hmm. And I really love a theatre company as Cahoot with Mary Jo like she's really doing a brilliant, beautiful, beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful work there. She involved everything, like a little one from Iran, an older woman from Afghanistan, somebody from Africa, somebody from Kosovo, somebody from Israel, you know, and, and, and that's that's for me, that theater, of course theater, you wanna see, it's like you're storytelling mm-hmm. by, by doing that. You have to bring the actual, you know, not the mainstream. You have to show me. Like I want to see you talking about your story. That's for me mm-hmm. the theater, and Cahoots is doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm, you know, just hoping like sometimes when you do that that kind of theater, you don't get a lot of fun. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. you don't get because you don't do Shakespeare, you don't do um, the actual the mm-hmm. mainstream thing, and and I'm, uh, they're doing a great, great, great job. Cahoots always doing a great job, and and. If you ask me about Debian, like, you know, I don't know if you hear about water school. Oh, I actually, so I actually know to be personally. I've, okay. I've worked with her a few okay. times in the like, past. Like she run a school mm. called water school. Mm. Water school Brilliant. is like she bringing these young, talented people, give them a chance. Mm. That's that's for me the thing. That's mm. for me the teaching, you know. That's for me the mentoring. That's for, she give them environment. And actually I volunteer there. I teach a lot at mm. water school, you know. And she always run out of like now she's struggling actually to keep yeah. that, to keep that yeah. uh, place open and the people go there unbelievable they're coming from hard time they're coming from a hard area they're coming from a really rough rough time in their life they're young and to give them a hope and to give them a space and form of something like they can form it more and make it happening for them to show and to share also their stories is a big of a deal. That's what we need, mm-hmm. yeah. especially exactly you know, in, in all those, they call it poverty area or low income area. Mm-hmm. We don't need like a court of basketball. Not everybody want to play basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really, honestly, we need more community. Give them a space and physical thing mm-hmm. and give them something like this. Just let them run it. And they're, yeah. they're brilliant. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's that's what Kahoot mm-hmm. and especially what the school doing. Yeah. Sometimes the, the arts is severely like underestimated in its importance for youth, especially youth who are going through such a difficult time. Um, and I've got, just got one more question for you. Uh, so you've had a fairly long and illustrious career. You've done so much. So yeah, what I want to ask... Really young. <laughs> <laughs> and very handsome, very this handsome, I'll add. <laughs> used to be blonde, I don't know. <laughs> little blonde highlights <laughs> in the beard. Um, yeah, so, but I want to ask you what's next for you? What next? I'm, I'm doing a project. I'm hoping... Uh, a project of to be proud of. I just want to do something different. I'm 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 trying to build the center art school in in a place in west south of Sudan called Nuba Mountain, mm-hmm. where now there is a war. I supposed to be there actually now physically, mm-hmm. but I couldn't go because there is a war going on. Mm-hmm. I did call. I collect like old instruments, bought it, and I sent it there. Why I'm doing that? A friend of mine, he did a documentary, and as I said, I do documentary too. I do uh, documentary as well. And he done a documentary, and I was watching it. Those children, everything they draw or they write is about war. They don't know nothing but war. You know, even if, if you give them something to make a toy, they will make a machine gun, they will make something like And I said, and I look back, I said, this is crazy, because those, they grow up knowing only war is norm, which is not norm killing people like people dying mm-hmm. no it's not norm it's not norm war mm-hmm. it never been norm but when it's happening and going for a long period of time some people they believe okay this is what it is this is what life all about but that's not what it is what I'm trying and I'm, I'm very sure those kids some of them they were making a toys they were making a machine gun actually but I don't know the style but they were the guy was there to me well it exactly like the machine gun was the mm-hmm. guy he was it was in his hand. Mm-hmm. That means those guys, they have a very, you know, great level of, you know, technique. And I thought, you know what, I'll do something. Usually I send music instrument. Now I'm trying to build a school. They can use it as a regular school, 
model, but also based on art, to teach them art. And you know what? Yes, there is war. Why don't you write me a song about that? Uh, you know, make it more intellectual, and, and that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I did a good concert that was, you know, successful for the first one. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to also go there and shoot the documentary as well. Mm -hmm. Those the kids, they live in the caves, believe it or not. They call the cave. If you Google them, put uh, uh, Noba Mountain in Sudan, they live in the caves. Nowadays, like this is 2016, there is people who still live in the caves. Because why they live in the caves? Not because they want, no. What they have there, it's beautiful. The mountain is great. Because airplane always drop, dropping boom, boom, boom. That's what yeah. it is. And they know that sound and they know the caves. And I call even my project called the, the I, I think you, Sandy, you saw when I put it on yeah. Facebook, and I think you comment called the Kids uh, Kids mm -hmm. or the Kids of the Caves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that's know. the name of my. I think that's what I'm. You know, maybe it's not mainstream. It's not mm -hmm. oh excited, but <laughs> excited for me and for those mm -hmm. kids probably. Yeah. Good. If there's well, also if there's any like if someone wants to. Um, support you in this venture in any way is there how how should they get a hold of you you know i'm i'm around i actually don't have cell phone i don't use business <laughs> card i use i use i don't mind facebook a okay. lot of people they mind facebook but i mm -hmm. don't mind i see and also i get gigs and i i promote my stuff and i get to read conscious mm -hmm. post when sandy she posts something you know mm -hmm. you know stuff like you know i don't mind that and i seeing people like you know Mm -hmm. streaming live stuff happening you know mm -hmm. all this shooting in America and all those stuff like it's ha a lot of people wow not well, not always happening before but mm -hmm. now there is cell phone mm -hmm. now there is camera everywhere mm -hmm. you know this what you know I don't mind see, I mean it's, it's, it's sad to see that happening but you know what I don't want to see it on you know after you edit it on CNN and you make it different way no I want to mm -hmm. see it raw mm -hmm. that's what it, you know you can bullet it Abdul Hamid probably just google it probably you mm -hmm. get all my stuff but don't send me anything at Tumblr College I don't really check that email <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that phone number also I don't use <laughs> would it be okay to post a link on Facebook from the why are you Facebook to your project please yeah. okay yeah Great. yeah we'll anything that. anything like can help mm -hmm. humanity I'm down for that <laughs> for me I believe humanity is more important than religion mm -hmm. okay. and, and without humanity I don't know what kind of religion that I'm a Muslim I hope nobody will shoot me after this <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so too. Um, Can I just ask one last question? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I'm a musician myself, oh. and so I'm just interested, like, there's a lot of debate whether um, if you're a musician, you should just try and pursue your career um, with or without schooling. So do you think that going to school for music um, has really impacted... Or, I mean, sorry, have you gone to school for music, or is that not something that you've... That's a great question. I did put in a school, like, in Sudan... When I was a child, it used to be a communist country. Okay. <laughs> Most of those, like, you know, used to be, a, and, and we get sponsored by China and North Korea. Mm -hmm. My teacher was Chinese, and I've been put there because this, you know, like 5,000 kids, they will apply, and they wanted only like 50. Right. You know, and they have a physical place called the Palace of Art for Children and Youth. Very highly, well, well maintained, and mm -hmm. well, I did go, went to school, but, uh, the raw talent, I do also appreciate the self-taught person as well, you know, there is no, I don't, you know, like, agree about one more than another, True. but I always believe education can get you a ticket to something, what that, what the, what that something is, like, we don't know, like I've seen a lot of my students, they go and, and do a teacher's college, and they become a teacher, right. and then you have a double here, you have an art, and then you have you teach another topic. Then you are you are more you have more chance like to to have work, but that's for work. But also there is another kind they will quit school and in a sudden they are like, wow, they are a star, you know, they are a rock star or something. You know, work both way, you know. Grow up like naturally, just learning from people. I believe that system very well. Mm -hmm. And 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 also you and also I study as well, yes, yeah. both ways. This is why it's hard for me, you know, especially in, 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 in Canada. Even if with bachelor's degree, you cannot do nothing. You need mm -hmm. a master. Yeah. Always. And, and it's up to the person. It's up to the person. Some people, they love to have more knowledge. 
and and they have more goal like some people as a teacher where like a musician like I travel like in the summer I go all over the world right I go everywhere and come back and I have like for me playing is more important like, right you know and, and if for me if you want advice like just keep playing keep gigging keep you know if you any jam session just keep doing it right. and all the style of music don't call yourself I am jazz musician or rock musician right. learn everything thanks for the advice Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. Really glad to be here. Thank you, guys. This show is produced by the YRU creative team, Annika, Cody, Jasmine, and Dante. Thanks to the Office of the Provincial Advocate for Children and Youth, and special thanks to Erwin Elman, Audrey Thompson, Sandy Wynia katz Rhonda Andal, and the staff at CJRU. This is Walid Abdul Hamid, and you are listening to Why Are You on CJRU 1280 AM.